Hey, I'm Lauren. This is Bizarre Gardening Accident. I am in my mid-30s and I talk about makeup on YouTube. The makeup that I'm talking about on YouTube today is five tips for getting into colorful makeup when you are in your 30s. Uh, I am talking to the person who thinks that they can't wear colorful colorful makeup for whatever reason, whether that's something to do with your eye shape or your skin texture or your age or anything like that, or whether it's to do with uh, any environmental factor that you have, any reason that you think that you can't wear a pink smoky eye to the grocery store, I am here to tell you that you absolutely can. So that's, that's, that's what I'm doing today. Uh, if you find something helpful in this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, that really helps me out and kind of helps me know what direction to go uh, as a content creator. Uh, so yeah, we'll get into it now. Let's get this show on the road. The first tip that I have for getting into colorful makeup, if you have not previously worn colorful makeup, is to give yourself permission to do it. There are decorum type situations where a pink smoky, I'm just using a pink smoky eye because that's what I'm wearing right now. I don't literally mean only pink smoky eyes, any, any color, any you know shape, whatever. Um, there are times when super colorful eye makeup might be inappropriate. Like I wouldn't wear this to a funeral for example, but I will absolutely do my grocery shopping in it. I will absolutely pick up my kid from school in it or just, you know, general day-to-day -day activities. I, I also understand that many people work jobs where this type of makeup would not be acceptable in your office. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you sit down to put on makeup that you just want to put on your face for a reason that is not you know, uh, uh, work or whatever, when you sit down and you do the makeup that you want to do and you think, oh, I can't wear that color. Yes, you can. All you got to do is put it on your face. Seriously, that's it. It is as simple as that. Give yourself permission to wear the emerald green smoky eye to the grocery store or, or whatever. If that's what you feel like you want to do, then do it. And if you feel like you can't, well, I'm here to tell you that you can. So, I, whoever told you that you couldn't, please send them my way. I'm happy to have a discussion with them about why they're wrong about that. So, to piggyback off of giving yourself permission to do it, a more practical tip is practice at home. That's my second one that I think is really important. And the reason that it's really important is because if this is new for you, the first time that you put a bunch of different makeup on your face, you're going to hate it you're gonna hate the way it looks and be like, oh no, this was a huge mistake. I, in fact, cannot wear colorful makeup. Again, that's still not correct. You're not used to seeing your face in colorful makeup. It can be really jarring for your face to suddenly look very different than it always does when you look in the mirror. So when you get out your little palette for the first time and you're like, okay, I am definitely going to wear blue eyeshadow today and you get it all on and you're like, oh my God, I'll never do this again in my life. Please keep going. Really, please keep going. A lot of it is getting used to what you look like in way more makeup than you normally wear or in different makeup than you, nor than you normally wear. It's just getting used to the, to the way your face looks, which is why I would recommend a lot of practicing at home and not going anywhere. You can either let you know anyone that might live in your house choose to see it or you can choose to let anyone who might live in your house see it or you can do this completely by yourself or whatever. No one has to see it. I would recommend like putting on makeup for like super low stakes stuff. Like when you don't have to go anywhere, do your makeup. And then when you catch a glimpse of yourself, you know, in a mirror or whatever around the house, you're not completely thrown off by it if you're only doing it at home first. So practicing at home is huge. The other part of practice and I, I mean, everyone hates to hear this, right? But like, you gotta practice. You're not going to immediately be able to do probably what you wanna do right off the bat. Um, it does take practice. It takes some techniques and getting used to. Also, if you are in your 30s, then if you're anything like me, you have started to have some like saggy bits or some crepey bits 
or some not great texture bits. And so finding both techniques and products that work for your specific eye shape, skin situation, all of that will take time as well. And experimenting at home makes that process a lot easier in my opinion. Um, the third thing that I would say is be prepared to talk about your makeup. Um, that's probably not great news for anyone who hates dealing with people, um, but I do find that the more colorful makeup I do, the more people tend to talk to me about it. I'm not a person that minds that. I'll talk to a fence post, I'll talk to anybody about anything, and no one's ever been ugly to me about my makeup, which I also want to point out is definitely a function of my straight size white girl privilege. Probably no one's going to be rude to me. Uh, and so that's why I've had that experience personally and I'm not trying to say that no one will ever be rude to you. That might happen um, and it sucks. And I, I think that that's something that you just need to, to be aware of is that when you wear makeup, oh God, this, this sounds like I'm like, <laughs> that it's okay that people would say something ugly to you. Of course it's not. But people do tend to take colorful makeup as an invitation to talk to you. Uh, and most of the time that doesn't bother me. I'm fine with that. But I do think if you're a more introverted person or if you're a person who really fucking can't stand talking to people, um, just I would be aware of that. I've found that people tend to talk to me about my makeup the crazier it gets. Uh, let's see, the fourth thing I would tell you to do is take pictures and video. It will be painful in the beginning. Uh, you won't want to look at the pictures, you won't want to look at the video because again it's new and it's hard and when you change your face it is it can be difficult to get used to but do take the pictures and do take the video because number one you're going to be amazed at your progress and it's hard to see that progress if you don't document the beginning so that you could compare later the second thing is uh my makeup skills have improved from watching myself like filming myself and then editing it uh, i've begun to understand a whole lot about my eye shape and also just kind of how the planes of my face really kind of function and also what I look like to the rest of the world. Um, that's been really helpful for me in terms of makeup application. So I'm not saying like become a YouTuber, but I am saying film yourself putting on makeup. I mean, just like with your phone, film yourself putting on makeup a couple of times and I think you'll gain some valuable insight into your face shape, your eye shape, generally where you want color placed or what colors might look good with your skin tone, just things like that. I would really encourage picture and video for that reason. My fifth tip is do not go crazy buying makeup. In the beginning, you will not be sure what your preferences are or what your needs are or you know what colors you like to wear or any of that. So like I would just try to be very judicious in the beginning about buying makeup because it's very easy to go overboard and buy way more than you need. I am saying this as a person who owns close to 100 eyeshadow palettes. They're, is no good reason for any person to own close to 100 eyeshadow palettes. It's why I'm currently not buying any makeup and focusing on using the makeup that I have. Also, I will be doing a video related to that right after I do this one and I'm gonna be um, finding the Natasha Denona Mini Love Palette in my collection. I know I have those five shades, so I'm about to do that anyway. I'll, I'll stick a little link if it's up, and if not, I'll come back and stick a little link to that um, in the little eye up here. So yeah, don't go crazy buying makeup is, is my point. It, it's gonna take you a while to figure out what you want, what you need, what techniques you like, what you're looking for in a product, those sorts of things. And to me, doing the research on the makeup is at least as much fun as buying the makeup. Buying the makeup is anticlimactic. You buy it and you're done. But the research, like if you're, if you, if you want to like really get into it and pick your products well, it's fun to really do that research, I think. So yeah, those are my five tips for getting into colorful makeup if you haven't been 
wearing it for your entire life. So just to recap, give yourself permission to do it. There might be people in your life who question you about it. And to those people, I would say, it's just makeup. It washes off. It's not that serious. And it's also my face and you don't need to worry about it. That's, it's real easy. That's, that's not, it's your face. It washes off. Don't worry about it. Uh, practice at home. Practice makes perfect. It's also low stakes. You're not going to feel like an idiot walking out the door in makeup that you're not totally confident in. So I would say practice at home until you're ready to walk out the door. And when you are ready to walk out the door, do something quick and low stakes. Go to the grocery store. Fill your car up with gas. Whatever it is. Just a short quick trip to kind of get you used to getting out the door with a bunch of shit on your face. Uh, be prepared for people to talk to you in public about it. That happens to me all the time. No one is ever ugly to me. That might not be the case for you. Um, but do be prepared to it's people, people see bright makeup as an invitation to talk to you sometimes for, for good or for ill. Uh, take pictures and video. You will be amazed at the progress that you make and the video will give you insights into your face and its shape and what it needs in terms of makeup uh, very quickly in a way that you might not have previously considered. And don't go crazy buying makeup. Those are my tips. Thanks for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this video or if you found something helpful or interesting, please give it a thumbs up. If this kind of content is up your alley, if I seem like your cup of tea, then I hope you will please consider subscribing. I would be thrilled to have you. Remember, anything worth doing is worth overdoing. I'll see you in the next one.